Welcome to Daily Devotions for St Swithins at Pimble. It's a blessing to come together with you all to look at our scripture for today. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, you have instructed us to recognise that whatever we need and whatever we lack is in you. Be with us this morning as we seek to be enlightened by your word so that we may cling only to you, seeking your strength and wisdom for our walk on this earth and your hope and promise for our eternal inheritance. We pray this through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We are looking today at Paul's second letter to Timothy, chapter 2 and verses 1 to 7, reading from the New International Version. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. The hard-working farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. We know that Timothy was probably a timid person at least someone who needed encouragement to persevere in his witness to Christ. We read of how two wonderful Christian women nurtured and taught Timothy, his mother Eunice and his grandmother Lois. We hear nothing about his father. So perhaps without a strong male presence, Timothy lacked the strength to witness to his faith. Previously, Paul assured and encouraged Timothy He gave the example of the suffering he himself had endured for the gospel. He prepared the ground for his next words with a series of reminders and challenges to Timothy. Now he is using an unarguable command, be strong. But not relying on strength he could find difficult to master and maintain, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. In many of his epistles, Paul encourages Christians by thanking God for his grace in their lives. More precisely, he encourages Christians by telling them that he thanks God for his grace in their lives. Thus, he draws attention to the followers' spiritual growth and rejoices in their work for the Lord. So now, with the grace of God, Timothy can and must step forward in strength not waiting for strength to suddenly be thrust upon him, taking action and in so doing, he will grow in strength and conviction. Paul is bringing urgency to the cause. If Timothy puts his trust in the grace of God and launches forward, he will not only mature, but he will also find that he will be able to persevere on his own in future times when Paul will not be there with encouragement and advice. Yes, Timothy may be overcome with timidity and self-pity, but with God's grace, he will conquer his frailties. Michael Bourne, in his treasure of a book, Chain to the Gospel, writes, Grace is the active touch of Christ, the evidence of his involvement with us in service, the hug of love. Timothy is being called to face up to his task for Christ looking to Christ as his inspiration and his enabler. He will find the strength of Christ flowing into him and through him he steps out. But he must step out. Christ is Paul's strengthener. In Philemon, Philemon he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In Corinthians he quotes the Lord's words to him. My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Christ is also Timothy's strengthener. 
He is also our strengthener. Through the Holy Spirit, we can find the strength of Christ and face the way that is destined for us in this world. We learn from this that if God calls and we respond, he enables. God enables us for the tasks ahead and he does not desert us. He renews our strength when we feel weighed down. He refreshes us with the presence of Christ, the living water, the bread of life. Jesus, the loving shepherd, guides and guards us and brings us back to the fold when in weakness we stray from the path. We must constantly seek the Holy Spirit to encourage and to empower us. In the following verses, Paul uses the two analogies, that of a soldier and that of an athlete. He talks about how both keep to the rules. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. Similarly, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. Common sense tells us that an army won't function very well if the soldiers are not obeying commandments and instead spending time and effort becoming involved in activities other than soldiering. Lost battles and untold numbers of deaths and casualties would be the result. Nor will the athlete win the prize if he or she doesn't keep to the rules of the game they are pursuing. Infractions of rules brings instant disqualification. We see that daily on television. Although Paul is talking here about the soldier and the athlete, I would like to draw attention to the army of soldiers and the team of athletes. We can achieve, like Paul and like Timothy, much with the grace that is in Christ Jesus. But how much more can we achieve as a great cloud of witnesses, as a church, the body of Christ, working together in unity, we can grow in strength for the gospel. During the battles of the Great War, the First World War, Billy Hughes, who was the Prime Minister of Australia, decided that we needed conscription. So many soldiers were dying or being wounded, unable to continue, that they needed more men, more fodder. So there was two um, votes for conscription. And interestingly, uh, the men in the trenches had a vote and more or less to the very man, they voted against conscription. They didn't want extra men to help them. They didn't want men who were conscripted. They wanted men who were part of their army. They wanted real soldiers who were going to work together as a unit to win a battle. They didn't want anybody who was likely to be a coward or, or likely to refuse orders so that they couldn't win the battle. The same with athletes. You've probably uh, watched your children or your grandchildren playing sport, playing team sport, football or cricket or soccer. And you find that when they're very young, there's always one or two children in the team who want to be what we call show ponies. They want to star, they want to get the goals, they want to win the glory. And you find in a few years later, if your grandchildren or children are still playing in these teams, that those little show ponies are no longer playing sport anymore because they couldn't achieve a win by themselves. They have to work it as a team. And when the coach starts coaching them in earnest as they get older, they don't like the fact that they can't be show ponies. Everybody needs to work together. And we work together in unity as the body of Christ. We will achieve great things. Verse 7 says, the hard-working farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. The soldier who dedicates his life to soldiering will win the battle of life. The athlete who trains and competes honourably will be awarded the garland. Plus, we must remember that God himself is to reap the first fruits. But the Christian who grows in strength through the grace of Christ will persevere with trials and tribulations and conquer the alien world for the gospel. Paul says in this final verse of our reading today, reflect on what I am saying, 
for the Lord will give you insight into all of this. Let this be our daily prayer, that we constantly reflect on God's word and that our eyes, our ears and our hearts may be open to see, to hear and to feel the Holy Spirit in all that we do. The Lord be with you. The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you now and forever. Amen.